Oh yeah, what's going on Game Leaper? This is The Jizz, and in today's video, we're going to be giving you 20 tips that are going to guarantee you Diamond Plus, and I don't care what ELO you are in. I've coached players to rank 1 in US, to Challenger from Master, to Platinum from Silver, whatever ELO you are in, I guarantee you, most of these tips, if not all of them, are going to apply to you. They're going to help you improve at this game and reach your potential, so make sure you stick around for the whole video, and also make sure to check out the Game Leap website in the description and comment section for more League of Legends learning resources, and these resources, Champion Course, guides, fraud analyses are made and designed by the best players in the world so you can become the best player you can be. Now let's get into the 20 tips. And starting us off, we have the five minute warm up. And quite simply, depending on the role you're playing in champion, of course, we're just going to get into a practice tool and put a few enemy dummies down and just practice our combos, our spacing, our attack moving on these dummies until we're warmed up. We don't want to go into a game with cold fingers and a cold brain because we want our rank to represent the best version of ourselves. 99% of OPGGs will include lots of games of players playing on tilt, players not playing warmed up and at their peak so that's what this five minute warm-up is going to do and you should do this before you start playing ranked every single day now tip number two is to set up item sets and obviously once again this is going to change for the champion and roll you're on so simply go to the collection tab open up your item sets and then what you want to do is deconstruct all the major items you're probably going to buy now of course you have your starting items but after this you'll have your mythic and then four legendary items you want to break these down so you can see all of the parts that actually make up these pieces this just brings convenience and clarity to the game and makes it easier to set goals during your games. Now, number three, screw the team, play for yourself. In other words, to get gold for yourself. Way too many players, especially those in high reloads, it actually holds them back thinking that their team matters. They see one assist ping from their jungler at Rift Herald, they run down to it. Or they see their mid laner trying to dive the enemy mid laner and they ping for assistance and you run towards it. Knowing that it's a really bad play and you yourself might be giving up guaranteed golden experience for it. So being selfish and making decisions based off your own golden experience and the likelihood this is going to happen is a much more consistent way of playing the game. Now number four, this is something that so many players do. The first move out of base is to click towards the edge of the fountain, not to stand still in base, buy your items and look at the shopkeeper's bald head. And the reason this is so important is because on average, I reckon you can save up to 10 seconds compared to the standard low elo player. Most of them just stand in base browsing through the shop, whereas someone in challenger is already at their inhip tower ready to get back on the map and dominate. So this is so important. As soon as you hit the base, click towards the edge of the fountain, buy your items and obviously wait until your HP goes up and then get back on the map ASAP. Now tip number five, a health pot is more important than a control ward. Why do people think control wards matter? Okay, they bring value for sure, but if you don't have any sustain in your lane or maybe even in the jungle, getting a health potion, it is just essential. Okay, control ward helps in terms of vision and denying enemy vision, but if you lose half your HP to one JCQ combo, you are staying at that HP until you base. I don't care if you have a Soraka support or a Soda support as well, this is irrelevant. So if you do have leftover gold and you don't have a refillable potion or a health potion already, make sure you you get this, please do not buy a control ward instead. Now, tip number six, communicate your ideas and intentions. And what I mean by this is that so many players, when they look to make a play on the map, so they might be invading the enemy jungler, or they might be trying to dive the top laner. What they will end up doing most of the time is making that play happen without actually pinging their teammates and communicating what they want to do before the play actually happens. So you have to communicate preemptively before your idea actually materializes because this brings all of your teammates onto the same page you're on. This means that you're playing more as a team rather than individually. Like who's seen their jungler invade a level 2 and die because they get collapsed on? That's because they don't ping their intention so no one on their team knows what they're actually doing. So this is also critical. Now tip number 7 is going to help you in champion selection. Please don't blind pick champions that have 15 hard counters. Now I know this is not going to be the be all and end all of League of Legends. Of course you can win against counter picks but it just makes life more difficult if you're blind picking a champion like Cho'Gath top. What about if the enemy top laner locks in Darius or Set? You're going to lose lane 100% and probably lose in 15 minutes. And we made a video on this a few days ago talking about the best champion pools for season 12 for every single role. So make sure if you guys want to address this tip and pick the best blind pick champions, make sure you check out that video. Now tip number eight is map trading. Now what I mean by this is that let's say the enemy jungler ganks your top laner and they end up getting that top tier tower. So what you have to do is initiate a trade. Okay, you guys are going to take my top tower. What I'm going to do is take the bot tower. I'm going to take your bot side jungle, maybe even dragon. So you're trading on the map. Otherwise, what happens is that when your top laner dies, they're dying for free. They're dying for nothing. So it's imperative that you trade resources and almost look at the map from a bird's eye point of view. If you see that your team has lost gold somewhere on the map, try to create your own gold lead on the other side of the map. Now, tip number 10, please let your jungler solo dragon. And if you're the jungler, ping your bot lane to go away. The number of times I see an AD carry or a support help their jungler who has a free dragon. They don't need any help whatsoever. It tilts 
gets the living daylights out of me because from a team's point of view, it's so inefficient. If one of you can do the dragon, just let them do the dragon. Get some golden experience elsewhere. Stay in the bot lane, push the wave, get a tower played in that reset. Whatever move it is you make, you don't need to be doing something you don't need to be doing. It's as simple as that. And this is one of the most obvious examples. Now, tip number 11, disguise your movement. Guys, operating in fog, you know, as Karzik says, an unseen threat is the deadliest. He's true. If the enemy team does not know your location, you become a much bigger force on the map. So this could be something as simple as shoving a wave, running back out of lane, and then sitting in a brush, waiting for the enemy laner to push up again, and you can ambush them with your jungler potentially. Or it might be something as simple as this. You might be a support player, and instead of running straight back to the bot lane, you're moving around in your own jungle towards the dragon area. So you can move mid if you want to, you can move bot, you can play some wards down. So disguising your movement and staying hidden from the enemy team is an excellent tactic. Now tip number 12, what does the enemy team not want you to do? Because that's what you do. So let's think of an example here. Let's say you're playing a Moo Moo in the jungle. All you want to do, right, is hit level three so you can gank lanes. But if you're the enemy jungler playing someone like Graves or Kindra, for example, that Moo Moo does not want you to invade, does not want you to put pressure on them. They just want to have a free time scaling into a game. So that's what you do. You put pressure on them. You invade them. If you're playing against a Caitlyn in the bot lane, another example, you don't want the Caitlyn pushing the first wave because that means you're going to get pushed in and be susceptible to all of Caitlyn's poke. It's going to be very annoying to play against in lane. So if you're the Caitlyn player, that's exactly what you do. So knowing what the enemy team's plan is going to be is definitely one of the most effective tips on this countdown. Now, tip number 13, turret plates are a curse. So way too many players think the turret plates, oh my god, 160 gold, I'm getting this tower so good. In the first 14 minutes, turret plates are really there as a bait most of the time because they induce you to overstay. So lots of players before getting the tower plate probably have enough gold to base already and to get a really nice item for themselves. You might be playing Jax, let's say, and you already have your sheen, which is 700 gold, but you end up staying for a tower plate. You get another 160 gold, but what does this even mean? You're still getting a sheen, so it doesn't really change anything in the item department. And all it does is it allows the enemy top laner and potentially jungler to gank you for staying longer than you should have. So in other words here guys, if you already have the gold for a significant item in your item set that you've already set up, please do not overstay for a tower plate. It's never going to be a bad decision if you're basing as soon as you can. Now tip number 14, do not miss CS to ward. The number of players I see do this, they'll miss multiple minions, even players in master and grandmaster who have coached, they'll just walk out of lane, give up minions and ward somewhere where they probably don't even need to ward. So the fix to this is to ward so you don't miss CS. So most often if you crack your wave so you hard push your minions into the enemy tower you can back off and ward somewhere if the wave resets as soon as the minions collide you can ward somewhere or if the lane is frozen and you're not going to miss any minions in the next five seconds you can go to ward otherwise you are staying in lane getting that crucial golden experience and scaling so by moving elsewhere on the map particularly when you don't have to this is just inefficient now tip number 15 if you have no idea where the enemy jungler is look at the enemy mid laner because the enemy mid laner most of the time is going to be holding the side of the lane closest to their jungler so if their jungler's top side, that enemy mid laner is going to be holding the top side of the mid lane. So this is a very nice little trick you can do if you don't know where the enemy jungler is. Now tip number 16, when you buy a control ward, place it before showing on the map. So this goes back to tip number 11, disguising your movement. But when you buy a control ward, it's going to show in your inventory. So a great tip is to run out of base and before you show in your lane is to ward somewhere around your lane. Otherwise, the enemy champion will see you've got a control ward. And depending on where you move in the near future, they can probably predict where you're going to place that ward. So so by placing it without them knowing, this can be a very powerful tactic. Now, tip number 17 in the mid to late game, please stop sharing experience after 15 minutes. So it doesn't matter who you're playing, but if one of your carry champions is in a lane and farming and getting nice golden experience, please do not go to that lane and share it with them. You want your carries to scale and get as much golden experience under their belt as possible. Do not cuck your teammates by doing this. Now, moving on to tip number 18, champion diversity is really bad unless you're Chovy. So we're talking about solo queue here. So if we think one tricks typically outperform everyone else because they master a champion. Like if you guys were to ask yourself, have I actually mastered any champion in this game? Some of you for sure might have, but most people haven't because some champions take ages to actually learn and fully understand. If we think about Riven, for example, it takes years and thousands of games to pilot this champion at the highest level. So if you go on your OPGG and you can tell me in the comments, how many different champions have you played in the last 10 games? Now the benchmark really, if you've played more than two to three champions in 10 games, more often than not, this is just going to be a bad thing because 
you're changing your abilities and champion identity way too often, and it takes time once again to fully understand these champions, which some of us just don't have. So try to limit your champion pool to just a few champions. Even though it sounds a bit bad, this is just going to make you better at a few champions rather than average at a lot. For example, I'd rather be the best Shaco player in the world, which I was, rather than being average at like 20 meta champions. Now, tip number 19, it's not about if your jungler can gank right now, it's about if your jungler can gank in the near future. So what often happens in lanes is that when the lane is in a really good position to gank, people ask for a gank at that moment in time, but their jungler might be on the other side of the map. Their jungler might be wanting to recall. You have to play League as if you're playing in the future. So ask yourself, in 30 seconds time, is my lane going to be in a position where my jungler can gank? That means that you can say to your jungler, hey bro, this lane is going to be pushed up and the enemy champions who don't have flash, let's say, you can gank them after doing your Krugs and all of a sudden, you and your jungler are planning how you're going to play the next 30 seconds. You're playing in the future. This is one of the biggest things that every challenger player does around the world because most people will just play live League of Legends. They will just react to what's on their screen in the present rather than actually looking in the future and thinking about what the map and the lane is going to look like in the foreseeable future. Now, tip number 20 on this countdown, guys, and if you did enjoy this video, please let us know by leaving a like down below. Do not get sucked into the Aram Fiesta burger flip that happens at 15 minutes in pretty much every single ELO. I know it looks fun, but if we're playing an Aram, we just jump on Howling Abyss and we play it in a different game mode. Remember what I said earlier, we are playing for ourselves, for our own golden experience. We don't want to share that with anyone else. We want to get as much golden experience onto our champion as possible so we become stronger. We scale into a game and it just gives you a much bigger chance of winning rather than just running mid and coin flipping every single fight for the next 10 minutes until one team actually starts snowballing. So those were the 20 tips guys to guarantee Diamond Plus in Season 12. Any questions about anything we've talked about in this video, please ask them in the comments down below. And until tomorrow's daily video, this has been the Jibby.